What makes some people confident? Is it just who they are or is it intentional things that they're doing? And the answer is yes. It's actually both that th there are things that we can do to help build our self-confidence and those things become natural expressions of somebody who is self-confident. So the more we are intentional about doing these specific things, the more that builds our sense of confidence and then the more those things just become natural things that we do every day. And so today I'm going to talk about several of them, several simple little things, shifts that you can make in your life that will start to build more self-confidence from the inside out. Stick around. These ones are good ones and you can start doing them today. If you're new to me and this is the first time we're connecting, my name is Julia Christina and I am a master mindset coach. I'm a researcher, I'm a therapist, and I am the creator of the Breakthrough Coaching Program. I have a master's degree in counseling psychology and I work to help heart-centered go-getter men and women break through worry, anxiety, and self-doubt so that they can get out of their heads, get out of their lives, and love their lives. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, will you do that? The little um, subscribe button is right down there. Make sure you do that now so that we can stay connected. And so now let's talk about this. What are some of these things that help us become more self-confident? And just a little sort of side note here. I did a video on this. I'm going to link to that. A lot of times I say self-confidence, but we're really what we're really talking about here is self-esteem. And I talk about the difference between self-confidence and self-esteem in another video, and I'm going to link that in the description, so make sure you watch that as well. But I use the word self-confidence because it is just a more kind of layman's term that people use to describe what they often really want, and that's more self-esteem, just feeling better about who they are as human beings. And so... The first one, the first thing that helps build that self-confidence is being self-aware. And this isn't about being self-conscious or high self-monitoring, like monitoring everything that you do and analyzing everything you do and, and trying to be perfect or trying to think about, you know, never upsetting anyone or being so careful all the time. That's not what self-awareness is. Self-awareness is about accurately kind of evaluating ourselves. It's about letting ourselves be imperfect it, because it's about owning our strengths, right? It's about really owning and connecting with our strengths and also acknowledging our weaknesses. It's about really looking at the things that we do well and owning that and letting ourselves connect with that, but then also acknowledging that, just being honest, there's things that I need to work on like everybody else, but not criticizing and condemning ourselves for not being perfect because nobody is. But it's about just having that more accurate self-awareness that doesn't kind of, we don't like puff ourselves up above everyone else, but we also don't kind of, you know, put ourselves down below everyone else. And so that's one thing that helps to build that deep sense of self-confidence. The next one is, is having integrity. And a lot of people think that having integrity means that we always keep our word to other people. And yes, that is a really important thing. And I'm guessing, because I know a lot of you and a lot of you who watch my videos, that you are people who do keep your word, that you are really thoughtful, caring, generous, giving people. And you do, you, you, you keep your word to other people, you show up for other people. And so you're like, yeah, Julia, like that one, I got that one down, but, I'm going to guess and I'm going to call you out and say that you might be really good at keeping your word to other people, but you in a lot of ways are likely crap at keeping your word to yourself. That you let yourself down a lot, that you make commitments to yourself about how you're going to take care of yourself or how you're going to be good to yourself or how you're going to honor yourself or, or things that are important to you that you tell yourself that you were going to follow through with and fulfill and you don't. You let yourself down, you let other things get in the way, you maybe let other people get in the way that you always put yourself or maybe often put yourself last. And that is actually impacting your self-confidence because it's a lack of integrity. And I want you to let me know in the comment section below, did I just call you out on something? Let me know if you're like, oh crap, I didn't even think about integrity being about keeping my word to myself. 
and following through and following up with the things that are important to me as well, not just about everybody else. Let me know in the comment section below. The next thing that people who are more confident do that we can do as well to build our confidence is they have healthy boundaries that they this also then ties into that integrity because they allow themselves to say no to other people and thereby a lot of the times allowing themselves to say yes to themselves it also means that they don't let themselves be guided or manipulated by guilt or obligation that they allow themselves to say yes when they want to and no when they need to that they have that self-integrity they respect themselves they listen to themselves they pay attention to themselves and their want their own wants and needs and preferences and i have a download for you for those of you who struggle with saying no um, i have a free download i'll put it in the description below you can grab that now it's called 25 ways to say no and it's just to help you get a start on having some healthy boundaries in your life and i think you'll find a lot of those really useful for those of you who struggle with respecting yourself and taking time for yourself because you don't know how to say no so you let yourself get pulled into things that you really don't want to be doing the next one is that they make decisions and they go with them. They don't sit around humming and hawing and stressing and worrying and, and second guessing. Yeah, they do their research and they make informed decisions. They don't just like flippantly just like go through life just being like, sure, whatever. Like they don't put, it's not that they don't put any thought into it, but they do put the thought into it and then they go with it and they own it and they connect with it and they let themselves just sort of do make that decision instead of then, you know, humming and hawing beforehand and then making the decision and then humming and hawing afterwards and thinking like, oh, did I make the right decision? They just trust themselves. They trust themselves that no matter what, they're going to be okay. And dare I say that no matter what decision they make, they're also going to be happy. That they trust themselves that even if the decision turns out being something that they weren't expecting or more challenging or more difficult or creating like bringing up things in their life that they have to deal with that they trust themselves they're they're going to be able to handle it and to get through it and so they just let themselves make decisions as simple as making a decision on what to order at a restaurant and just going with it even if it's not the perfect meal that gives them the ultimate culinary experience that they're like it's okay I'm going to just be grateful that I'm being nourished right now and trust that I'll have another opportunity for a great meal if this one isn't. Or something as complex as making a career transition, going back to school, that they do their research and they look into it and they make an informed decision, but then they go with that decision and they trust that even if it doesn't turn out to be everything they were expecting, that they will learn something, that they will grow in some way and it will help them get more clear on what they do want. And so they don't go into decision debt. They don't go into that turmoil. They don't put themselves through that turmoil. They make a decision. They do what they need to do to get to that decision. And then they make it and they go with it and they stick with it. And they trust themselves to be able to handle whatever comes from it. The next one is that they're not typically guarded and defensive. That they don't go through life feeling like, like everyone is out to get them or that everyone is dangerous. That they are typically just friendly with people that they come across. And they typically find that when they are friendly with people, most people are friendly back. That they even maybe see strangers as just friends they haven't gotten to know yet. So when we're going through life in a more sort of open and trusting, not naive, like I'm not talking about being naive or oblivious, but in a more just sort of open and trusting and assuming the best in other people, they often get that back. And then that helps them to feel good about themselves because they just feel good about who they are, that they're going through life and, and, and having nice connections with people and just feeling good about the society that they live in and their neighbors and their community and whatever it is. And that does actually play a big part in our self-esteem and our deep sense of, of self-confidence. It's feeling like we're connected and like we belong. So they're not guarded and defensive. They are open and a little bit more trusting. The next one is that they are assertive. They say what they want and need and think and feel when they 
want and need to, that they don't shy away from standing up and speaking up, especially about things that are really important to them. And now they don't go bulldozing their their opinions or their needs, or they don't like push over everyone else and say, my stuff is most, more, most important or more important than everyone else's, but they communicate in a clear and respectful way. They don't let other people walk all over them. They show up in life and believe that they count too, and they are able to communicate that in their daily interactions. If becoming a healthier communicator and being a more cons- uh, assertive communicator is something that you are interested in, I have a crash course called Speak and Feel Heard, and I'll put the link to that below where you can get more information about that. And it is full, you guys, especially for those of you who are more sort of empathic, more highly sensitive, more kind of compassionate people that do struggle more with kind of standing up and speaking up, this is the course for you. This is the workshop for you and you can grab that. It's gonna give you tons of tools, um, mindset shifts and strategies and step-by-step processes for just showing up. Not, Not only speaking more assertively, but showing up more assertively in your life. The next thing that they do is they manage their monkey mind. All of us have a monkey mind. All of us have thoughts that are coming in there and going everywhere and sometimes screeching and like pulling on each other's tails and like creating all kind of havoc. And just like jumping from one thing to the next and can often feel really overwhelming or stressful or worrisome and like my overthinkers, where are my overthinkers, my overstressors, my overworriers who are like, oh my gosh, I just need to get out of my head. I just need to shut it down, shut it off. And people who are more confident, they still have the monkey mind, but they don't let the monkeys get out of control. They manage their monkeys. They don't just let their thoughts kind of just go wherever they will. They work to really keep things at bay. They don't just let their thoughts take over or their emotions just like take over and run their lives. They run their lives. The next thing, and I really want to be careful with this one because this one can be used in in not a helpful way, but people who are more confident and a way to build our confidence is to be more grateful. And I'm not talking about the cliche here, like just be grateful if things are bad, just be grateful if you're suffering, just be grateful if you're going through something hard, just be grateful. No, that is about discounting our human experience. That is about avoiding and repressing our emotions. That kind of gratitude, not helpful. The kind of gratitude I'm talking about is in the in-between times, just the daily life stuff. Just as we're going through the motions and we are living our lives day to day, that taking a second, regularly, no matter what you're doing or where you are, to just notice and connect with and be grateful for what is. If it's the sun um, coming down and warming you up and just feeling the sun on your body, if it's the breeze on your face as you're walking down the street, if it's your feet for being able to walk down the street and feel the sun and the breeze, being grateful for that stuff. If it's the food in your fridge or the soft bed that you sleep in or the roof over your head or the the safe home that you live in or your children or your partner or your friends, just a text from a friend, being grateful for that. Noticing that just a gratitude lifestyle as opposed to just a gratitude practice where we sit down and write three things that we're grateful for every day, but a gratitude lifestyle to notice and connect with. And that just helps us feel happier and better because there is often so much joy around us that's free for the taking. And all we have to do is reach out and grab it. And so letting ourselves do that, letting ourselves connect with gratitude. Which one of these really connected with you? Which one of these are you like, that's the one that feels easy. Start with the one that feels easiest and do that and go from there. Don't feel like you have to do all of them right away. That's overwhelming, that's stressful, and we're more likely to just feel like too hard. But one, the one that feels easiest and being intentional about that, tell me in the comments section below. I would love to hear. I also have a free download for you. It's my five favorite healthy reminders. This is something that I actually use a lot. These are little sayings and reminders and almost little mantras that I use when my monkey mind is going a little bit nuts and to help kind of calm the monkeys and to recenter and reground myself and connect back with my true self again. You can grab that download, five favorite healthy reminders. It's gonna be in the description below. Let me know, how was this for you? 
Make sense? We're good? Like the video. Share it out if you think other people could use this information. And let me know if you share it out because that means so much to me and I want to make sure that I thank you personally. Let me know in the comment section below. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Come and join my Facebook group. All the things. I've got so many things for you to do. Come and join my, but they're all good things. Uh, come and join my Facebook group, goodformegroup.com. And I will see you there. Until next time, take good care.